Alrighty, alrighty, you are looking live. It's so hold out, man. Live stadium. Where today the 16 and 0 playoff bound New York Giants are taking on the 0 and 16 Philadelphia Eagles. Why are the Philadelphia Eagles 0 and 16? Because they suck. They lost the Super Bowl because they suck. The Philadelphia Eagles suck. Rolls right off the tongue there, guys. Philadelphia sucks. Welcome to the gridiron. Anybody, anybody out there at all is going to spend a little bit of time with me here this evening. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope anybody's going to spend any time watching a replay. This once again, thank you so much on the bottom of my heart. It means the world to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to try to go about 30 minutes here tonight. Shoot my mouth off for about 30 minutes. Anybody got anything to say, please feel free. Fire away. Throw it in the chat box. You should try to check on the chat box. I give it five or ten minutes or so. So if I see something in there, I try to respond to it as fast as I can. So please feel free. Fire away. Instead of also me just rambling on for half an hour, 40 minutes, whatever they can watch up there. It's nice just to talk to another giant fan. So please feel free. Fire away. All right. Before we get started, if anybody wants to help support my channel out, it would mean the absolute world to me. In the description box below. Uh, the top link in the description box takes you to my membership page. I got three, three different membership levels. The first one's called the Saquon. Second one's called the Lawrence Taylor. Third membership level's called the Gridiron. Each one's got their own little perks to them. So if you want to help support my channel, I, it would mean the world to me. And I thank you in advance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you are subscribed to my channel, Thank you. Once again, I can use all the support I can get, guys. But if you're not, please go down below, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon. That way, next time I go live or put a video out, you'll be notified. And it's free of charge. What do you got to lose, right? But if you are subscribed to my channel, thank you, thank you, thank you. And finally, in the description box below, a little bit, little bit lower down, there's two Facebook links. The top Facebook link takes you to my Facebook group. It's called the New York Giants to Gridiron. It's a group. I got to move the chair because my dog wants to get in here. I got to start petting my dog. All right, buddy. Here's Randy. All right, we're good to go. <laughs> we're we're okay. We're good to go. Randy's here. <laughs> She's too freaking much. But yeah, the group, it's called the New York Giants to Gridiron. Basically, I say this in every video. My YouTube channel, my Facebook group, Facebook page. It's all called the same thing, New York Giants to Gridiron. That way, a moron like me. I can remember. It's not like I'm not like, you know, what's the group called? What's my page? What's the channel called? It's all called the same thing. It dumbs it down from me. All right, basically. What are we at here? We're still holding, we have over 3,900 members. We're getting very, very close to 4,000 members in the group. Doing really, really well. Basically, what is after I'm done going live here, you, I'll usually I'll spend like the next hour or two or so just putting stuff in the group and putting stuff in the page, which I'll go over in a minute. You know, I mean, whether it's a video, I share an article, it's a post, a picture, it's just something showing some stats and a ball player, uh, something making fun of the Eagles or the Cowboys, which are my personal favorites, right? I, I put stuff in there. And if you become a member, not only do I post stuff in there, but members post stuff in there as well, too. So every day is just a ton of stuff going into the uh, the group every day. Then the second Facebook link takes you to my my page. It's, uh, you know, it's called the same thing, New York Giants to Grand, but it's a page. I'm the administrator, so I'm the only one to post in here, but it's the same thing. You know, after I get done going live, I, I spend say, at least an hour, uh, up to two hours, you know, just finding all kinds of stuff, whatever I can. You know, what's, what's the same thing, whether it's a video, a post, a picture, something showing some stats of a ball player and sharing an article, something making fun of the Eagles or Cowboys. I, I spend, you know, the next couple of hours just putting stuff in there. What are we at here? We're at over 1,900 likes, and we just hit 6,400 followers. So it's really doing simply marvelous, This the page. It's really, really doing good. And basically, and I don't commingle them. So basically, for the most part, whatever I put in the page, I don't put in the group. Whatever I put in the group, I don't put in the page. And I try to keep them separate, right? I mean, unless it's something really juicy and just, it makes fun of the Eagles, and I just want to share it with everybody, right? So then I might put that in the page in the group. But other than that, I just try to keep some stuff stuff separate so if you go to the page and you like it and you follow it and you go to the group and you become a member every day seven days a week there's a ton of giant stuff in there going going in there every day and like i say in all my videos right <laughs> 
if you go to the page and you like it and you follow it and you go to the group and become a member, if you're not 100% satisfied, you get your money back guaranteed. <laughs> oh, Benny G-Man. Happy 4th of July to you. Yeah, that's why I didn't go live last night. We had a party here at the at the house went on rather late so i i uh i i'm i'm, I'm doing like two videos um I'm, I'm doing my 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 yearly series which we're doing 1974 tonight i, I was going to do that last night but the party wanted by the time it got over with it had been a long day and everything like that and i just wanted to go to bed so that's why i didn't put anything out last night but we're gonna we're going strong here we got what do we got there's a second soon to be the third 20 we got a little over th uh, holy crap Hey, a little over three weeks and training camp's going to start. Man, they usually call it like the, like the dead zone, the dead time and all that, like six weeks or so. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the 25th, I think that's when the, the rookies show up. And I think the 26th to 27th is when the veterans have to show up. So, I mean, it's, it's a, so we're in about an hour and a half in South Jersey here. It'll be the third, right? Everything's supposed to start the 25th. So we got like 22 days and, wow, a little over three weeks. Guys, we're freaking off and freaking running. Are you ready? <laughs> I know I am. I know I am. So I always say this all the time. The 4th of July is my always my, it's my favorite holiday. Why? Well, because, I mean, I, I love the new year and Thanksgiving and all that. But, I mean, for, for football I and mean, the 4th of July, because it's just before the beginning of the season. Because it seems like you get so wrapped up into it and all of that. Once the first game goes, starts, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, there's no, there's no denying it. And then the second game, and then, then you turn around and you look, it's like, God, man, we're in the week six already. What the, what's going on with seasons? Third or oh, well, you know, then, then a few more weeks go by and, you know, game here, game, game, Thursday night, Sunday night, you're going, uh, it's going crazy. And all of a sudden you turn around, man, we're in the 13th week or what? The season just started. What's going on? You know, and before you know it, you got like a game left. Like, what is going on? And the season's always like, what is, you know, what the, you know, it just, it just, it just goes so fast. It's like, you know, before you know it, the, the weeks just fly on by. I mean, obviously, it's, it's, you know, like seeing the football. Don't get me wrong there. But that's why I like the fourth. It's just before the storm. You know, you're getting all – it's like it's like if you celebrate Christmas. Some people celebrate Hanukkah. Some people Christmas. Some people don't celebrate Christmas, whatever. But for me, it was Christmas. It was like the beginning of December. You know, you just you, – every day when I was a kid, every – Every 24 hours took like nine years, you know, from December 1st to December 2nd took like, I was like nine years older. You know, it just took so long for the days to go by. You just waiting for, for Christmas to come. You know, you know what I mean? And then it was the same thing, Christmas and the football season. Once Christmas came, it was like, you, you know, you maybe you went downstairs, you opened the presents up, boom, Christmas over. Uh, that's it. All that, you know, that's what it kind of sometimes an old fart like me that sometimes the season just seems like, <laughs> you know, like, oh my god right, well, i guess that's i guess we're waiting for the draft now again i guess that free agency in the draft okay here we go you know that's why i like the fourth the fourth's my the fourth's my favorite all right so we got five see what i uh, said what are, what are we got five bold predictions for the offense who is this fan sided a couple of them i agree with the first one i can i can uh, come close to saying I can come close. A couple of these, I think they're, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The first one, the first bold prediction for the offense here. Paris Campbell sets career high in yards and catches. Now, I can maybe kind of see this, especially because, well, I mean, 63 catches, that's a lot. That's a, that's, that's a lot. I mean, 623 yards. Now, as I'm saying, see, the one beauty of it, as I said, we get Saquon in the backfield, right? If, if we can, the offensive line gets a little bit better. Danny Jones, you know, more familiar in the offense. But, you know, see, they're paying attention to defense there, to what Saquon's doing back there, right? He's going this way. You're going to have at least one or so guys keeping an eye on him. You might have Darren Waller over here going that way. He's he's drawing attention over there. Maybe, who knows, you got Jalen Hyatt over here or Slayton or somebody just freaking just taking off going down here. You're going to have attention over, you know, I mean, so maybe Paris comes out underneath with all his speed. So you got, you know, the stuff just starts spreading out and opening up and you let Paris Campbell underneath, you know, especially early on, if maybe Shepard's not there or maybe on pop or Wandell's not back yet or something like that. You start spreading stuff out, opening stuff out, right? 
And Parrish, with that speed of his, you know, maybe he can average a little. Because last year was 10 yards a catch. Hey, can't complain. Every time he catches the ball, for the most part, first down. You know, doesn't always mean it's going to be a first down. But, you know, 10 yards, I'm oh, okay. You know, but with the speed, you'd like to see maybe a little bit more than that. But, I mean, I can see that. The problem is, is that there's only one football. Same thing like in basketball. You know, I mean, there's only one basketball, right? I mean, if you're on a team, you know, somebody likes to shoot the ball 95% of the time, yeah, you're not going to get that many shots. But, I mean, it's kind of like with, the, you know, with this. I mean, you got, you got a lot of guys, you know. There's only one, one ball, you know. So, it's – can he get – I mean, 17, 34, that's like three and a half. Can, that would be like every – I mean, that's possible. The problem with that – would be, I mean, I could see maybe in the beginning, yeah, especially if Wandale and Sterling Shepard are on pup, you know, I could see him, you know, basically that would be seven catches every two games. I can certainly see that. The problem would wind up being is that once the other guys start coming back, I mean, knock on wood, if they start coming back, and if we're healthy, if we're healthy, if Waller stays healthy, if if Hyatt can, you know, um, you know, I mean, not that he gets injured, but I mean, if he can get on the field and, and produce on the field, you know, because he's, he's a rookie, you know, if Slayton, right, I mean, Colin Johnson, if he makes it, you know, you don't know, I mean, you know, Hodgins, let's not forget about him, you know, then you got Waller, let's not forget about him, you know, so, you know, I can, I can see, you know, Campbell, I mean, but the, the problem is once you know once you we might start having too many toys out there trying to play with the ball you know that's going to be difficult but I, I could see maybe especially in career yards maybe getting over 600 maybe but i mean 60 he's supposed to catch 64 passes if he catches 64 you know 64 65 or so i mean that'd be fantastic but that might mean a couple of guys are injured or something like that so but i mean you know we'll see we will see. I mean, you know, he's, he's fast. He is fast. All right, so their next one here, the next bold prediction now. Mm, this one here. Whew. Saquon Barkley amasses 2,000 total yards. Oh, yeah, I don't see that happening. No. <laughs> I mean, even if he gets like, say, you know, I mean, 1,300 rushing yards once again, he'd have to get 700 receiving yards. And once again, there's only one ball. And honestly, if they got – See, uh, Brita, right? If they got Gray and you got Barkley, I mean, I would certainly, without question, without qu- it doesn't matter what you pay Saquon. It's not, it, it should never be, okay, well, Saquon, you're making whatever. I'm just throwing a number out there. Saquon, you're making $14 million this year. All right. So we're going to give you the ball more. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> it's like, Saquon, we just signed you to four years. We're kind of hoping you sign, you, 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 you play all four years. So we're going to, Less in your workload. I mean, uh, Herm, the Jack Wagon Edwards, I was just listening to, um, said, I think he had 295 touches last year. Let's let's look this up here. I, I think that's what the, that's what the Jack Wagon said. Uh, and he had obviously, I, and he had the um, uh, the 57 receptions. So he had like 350 touches there. There we go. Herm said 295. And I know it's I know it's 57 because he was tied with Richie James. Yeah, 295. Yeah. So he had um 352 touches. So a lot of touches. We need to get that down to you know no more than 300, no more than 300. I mean, he had more. I mean, last year was he ran the ball more than he ever had. I mean, even his rookie season, he only had 260. Hey, come in, buddy. Come on. Come on, good boy. All right. You know, even his rookie season, he had 261. 295 was the most, you know, in any season. That's way that's way too much. 350 touches. I mean, you know, he's uh, going to be 26. Let's get that down around 300. So, I mean, it's going to be a little difficult for him to get 2,000. Uh, I said, hopefully, they'll lessen his workload. So, I, I man, if he gets 2,000 on less touches, <laughs> sign me up for that program. <laughs> where, where do I sign? But. For him, they get, that's that's a lot of touches. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, that's a lot of yards. Hopefully, for less touches. All right, next one we got. Next bold prediction. 
Darren Waller. Well, yeah, yeah, this one I can see because Mark Bavaro was the only one. He had um, 1,000 yards in 1986. 1,000 yards right on the dot. So, I mean, Waller, yes, I mean, it's possible, especially if they, you know, if, they, if they're going to try to, you know, stretch the field and kind of go deep with them. Hopefully it's not like we're, you know, dinker, dunker kind of thing, like what they were doing with little Daniel Bellinger last year. You know, let him, whatever, five, ten yards down the field, let him do his thing. Hopefully Waller is, you know, opening things up, maybe down the seam or whatever. Maybe he can take a safety with him or something and outrun the safety or it'd be <laughs> – Somehow he winds up dragging a linebacker with him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the linebacker can catch, keep up with him. But um, I mean, I could, I could possibly see this. Now, once again, I, I, I'd have a hard time seeing him. You know, getting a ton of reset. I and mean, once again, he has to stay healthy too, right? I mean, if he can, st- you know, if he stays healthy for seventeen games and he gets eight hundred yards receiving or so, but you know, the, the the wealth is kind of spread around. I'm fine with that too. But I mean, I could see possibly getting a thousand yards. Yeah, that's quite possible. But, I mean, they, they got it here. I mean, it's going to be the Giant, Giants' 99th season. They've had 98 seasons, right? It's the 99th season coming out. They've only had one tight end catch 1,000 yards, and it was exactly 1,000 yards. Mark Bavar in 1986. Yeah. Uh, it says, Jones has not had an elite tight end to throw to in his NFL career, but he certainly will now. <laughs> in his four years as Giants quarterback, Jones' tight ends posted 467 yards. 467 yards. Yeah, 654 yards, 408 yards, and 268 yards, respectively. In 2021, Waller played in just 11 games and had 665 yards. So basically, at that rate, if he played the whole season, he would have had 1,000 yards. If he played six more games, he would have had 1,000 yards. Yeah, so so I mean, quite possible, quite possible. Um, and I think I think we have the, 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 the minds out there, you know, between Dable and Kafka. Uh, to, 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 to get that done. So that one I can certainly say. I can say Evan Neal has a Pro Bowl campaign. That means, does that mean he's going to have to overtake Lane Johnson? I don't see that happening unless Lane Johnson gets hurt. Lane the Machine Johnson. And I, I'm not even thinking about all the other guys. I'm too stupid to try to remember all the other right tackles in the NFL and NFC. So, a Pro Bowl campaign. Sign me up for that. I don't see him. You know, I mean, unless he's like, you know, unless Lane Johnson's number one and he winds up being number two, as I said, that's without me trying to go over all the other right tackles in the NFC. He said Evan Neal's rookie season was a serious struggle. He committed 27 penalties. Tied for the 27th month in football. Allowed seven sacks. Tied for seventh most in football. It was given a porous 44.1 overall grade by PFF. Despite all of that, Neil is in the line for a massive sophomore leap. That's going to be a heck of a massive sophomore leap. I mean, he's certainly, uh, you know, without question, he's going to get better. Without question. I mean, because you you can, there's things you can do to make yourself better. I mean, a lot, a lot of times guys, you know, they make it to the NFL and, you know, if, if they don't make it or they, you know, or they, 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 you know, they maybe want to be in a second stringer or they want to run a practice squad or they get cut or they wind up floundering around from one team to the next and all that. At the end of the day, can they look themselves right in, right in the mirror, right in their freaking own eyeballs and go, did I give it my absolute all? Did I do everything for the most part that I could? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like, you know, did I do the most? Did I, you know, I mean, some, yes, I gave it my opposite all. Well, no, you didn't. Yeah, you know, I mean, no, you didn't. If you did 100 push-ups, guess what? You could have done 101 push-ups. If you ran a mile, guess what? You could have ran a mile and one step. You know what I mean? So you never, ever, 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 ever gave it your all. Sorry. You know I mean, if somebody says, yeah, I gave it my all. No, you didn't. Because if you did 3 million sit-ups, you could have done 3 million and one sit-up. So you, you could always done more. But I hope you get my gist. My, you know, you know did, did I stay on the path? You know, did I stay focused to, you know, to where I want to go, right? Did I eat properly? Did I rest properly? Did I, did I study? You know, did I, did I, whatever, did I get stronger? Did I get limp more, you know, whatever, stretch out? Did, did I go to, I don't know, whatever, a chiropractor to get my back worked on? Did I do this? Did I do, there's a trillion things you can do. Guys can work on their hands. What uh, Evan Neal did, talk to, uh, you know, when the off season worked, work with the, um, uh, went to a school, right, to get better at his craft, to work on his craft. 
So a lot of times, you know, you know, the guys don't maybe make it in the pros. Well, it's like, you know, did you just kind of, well, I, I made it to the pros. I guess I should be good enough. I mean, I really don't have to, shouldn't have to do a whole heck of a lot. I mean, I'm here, right? I mean, I'm a pro, right? You know, you know, you got to, you know, I mean, this is, it's not easy. You got to work, you know, so. But I mean, the way what, the way he's working and, and he's taking himself. Have you ever saw you saw that picture? It came out a couple of days ago of him walking. He had the sleeveless shirts on. He's got the freaking the guns. Dude looks like a sequoia tree. I mean, it's it's hard to believe he's three hundred fifty pounds, six foot seven, three hundred fifty pounds. He looks like I don't know. I mean, he's a. I mean, it's tough to see in the picture that he's six foot seven, but six foot seven, three hundred fifty pounds, and I mean, he looks like I don't know. He looks like a basketball player. I mean. There's not many people like that built on the planet. There's not many built people that have ever been built like that. Period. Okay, so he he's he, he's been he's been he's been touched by God, shall we say, as as Wink says, um, you know, and he's he's working on his craft. So he, without question, he, if he can stay healthy, he's going to be better. Without question, all pro, sign me up. Uh, but I don't I don't see that happening. Maybe just yet, but you know, because he's got a little bit of ways to go. And then he said, then we go, Daniel Jones finishes top 10 in the MVP race. Top 10. Well, you know, I mean, it's like if you, if you, you know, you, if you win, <laughs> you're the greatest quarterback of all time, baby. Hey, right? you throw an interception, you're, you're the worst. We want you, we want you out of here. So if Daniel Jones can take him to the promise, not the prom, but I mean, you know, back to the playoffs. Maybe get some double digits. I mean, maybe we go 11 and 6 with a harder schedule. Get up there in the 20s as far as touchdown passes. Maybe keep the interceptions down a little low. You know, I can maybe number 10, some maybe, maybe somewhere around there. You know, I don't know, you know, how how high he'd wind up going. But um we'll, we'll wait and see. I mean, he's got some toys to play with. You know, as I can certainly see if we ever got him a dog, the number one, that one number one wide receiver. Right, if we ever got something like that, you know, what I mean, so we we I, I don't you know I don't know if we got that on the team. We got Waller, who's probably going to be hopefully maybe the number one target or whatever. But if you can ever get him the dog, couple him up with Waller and Bellinger, Saquon back there, and all, all those other little toys we got, you know, and keep that you know, that offensive line. You know, I can see Daniel Jones certainly being the top ten, absolutely. Yeah, but I mean, he's got he only had fifteen touchdown passes, as Herm Edwards pointed out, which I'm going to go over in a minute here, a couple minutes. You know, so he's got a little ways to go. But um, if he doesn't get twenty touchdown passes this year, uh, one of either, as I said before, either we got a problem <laughs> or he got hurt. And he missed about half the season. So, but I mean, yeah, I can see maybe maybe getting around number ten. But you know, he's you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's possible. I that I could say. All right, then the next one. What is this next one here? Let's see now. Yeah. Oh, Amani Oguarie seeking a career rejuvenation with the Giants. Now this is Big Blue View. I love their stuff. Great. This is Rivka. I can't see Rivka Board. Looks like he did this one here. Now the the thing is with Amani is that you know I got it there. Where are we at? Where's the money, PFF? There you go. All right. Now, this is fifth season in the NFL, right? His first season, it, only, it was only 215 snaps. Graded out of 71. His pass coverage was a 75. Yeah, but very small sample size. Uh, run defense, 68. He was only 146 times he, he was in coverage for 146 times, but his 75.3 coverage grade. I mean, you know, that was his rookie season. But since then, it hasn't been, even been close to that. His sophomore season, he played over 1,000 snaps. He graded out at a 50. His run defense was a 43. His pass coverage was a 51.2. Then his junior season, or his third season, he had 937 snaps, 535 in coverage, uh, his defense, it was a 59 overall. So, I mean, you know, nothing super horrible. Nothing super. No, when I talk a pro bowler, uh, his coverage grade was a 60. So, you know, adequate. He had, but that's when he had, you know, as a guy, I, 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 it is kind of makes you scratch your head. He had six interceptions and his coverage grade was only a 60. So what did he have? 
59% completion percentage. It's pretty good. That was his third season now. 41, uh, 69 targets gave up 41 uh, your, uh, completions. 582 yards gave up 14.2 yards of reception. He gave up two touchdowns. So basically the whole season, he gave up two touchdowns. Pretty darn gone good. His um, his second season, he basically played the whole season. Gave up three touchdowns. Pretty good. Last year, he, he played four. Basically, played half the half the snaps. Four hundred seventy four snaps. He gave up four touchdowns and had no interceptions. I mean, last year his his, D, his overall by PFF. That's all I'm going by. I'm never going to say I studied every one of his every one of his plays. I died nosed and diagrammed every one of his plays. I spent nine hours watching each one of his plays, every step he took, every hand movement he did, every time he moves. I'm not going to say that. That's why I go to PFF. They have these handy dandy grades here. So if they're grading his defense as, as a 30, chances are he wasn't a Hall of Famer that year, all right, or a pro ball or an all pro. I mean, so 30 is not too good. His coverage grade was a 31.3. His run defense was at 37.9. He gave up 75% completions. Um, 52 targets, he gave up 39 catches. For 504 yards, he gave up four touchdowns. So basically, he played like half the snaps, and he gave up four touchdowns. So at that rate, if he played the whole season, he would have gave up, whew, well, he would have gave up 1,000 yards receiving and eight touchdowns with no interceptions. That's pretty bad. So, <laughs> you know, hey, maybe Jerome, uh, Jerome Henderson, you know, as we saw last year, did, you know, did he make a whole, all pros out of the guys we had back there, you know, pro bowlers? No. But did he, did he, did he, uh, honestly, did he work some magic with some guys coming off the street? You know, we, we just bring it in there that maybe you didn't expect a whole heck of a lot from. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you, you're putting some guys out there. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Just kick my toe. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm trying to move my feet. He's fine. I'm sorry, pal. There you go. Go back to bed. <laughs> but you know, I mean, some of these guys you're bringing in, you're like, who's this guy? <laughs> yeah. Say, oh man, we might be in trouble. But you know, I mean, yeah. Obviously, where were we a top ten defense? No, we had some problems with the run. Yeah. But I mean, especially with Jerome Henderson, you know, the guy's pretty good. And w Wink said the same thing. Not that Wink's ever going to say. You know, you know, asking a question. Jerome Henderson is he good? Oh yeah, Jerome Henderson. Yeah, he's our, he's my uh, yeah defensive back coach. He sucks, but you know, <laughs> what am I gonna do? Right? He's the guy in the team, right? No, of course he's not gonna say that. You know, he you know he said you know which is the proper thing to say. He thinks he's the best defensive back coach in the league. So whether he one hundred percent means that he does mean that. You know, he's he said that multiple times. But you got to give uh, Jerome a lot of credit, you know. Um, and I actually heard some people saying kind of too, quite possibly too, that might be, and which makes a lot of sense to me because, once again, I am not the most versed, or uh, you know, in, with the football and all that stuff. I, I heard, you know, um, I can't remember who it was, but some very intelligent dudes who, who much younger than me <laughs> who know their stuff. So good boy. Kind of mentioned that maybe possibly uh, maybe the Deontay Banks kind of uh, bringing in was maybe to keep Mr. Henderson a little happy too. Yeah, you know, because I mean, if they think that much of him, it wouldn't take much. I mean, uh, uh, Lou a a a Anarumo, right? He was our defensive backs coach 2018, was it? 2018, I think it was. Then he went to Cincinnati, became their defensive uh, coordinator, who's doing a very good job. He was just ranked. Was it PFF or whatever I think it was? I did the video on it. PFF ranked him number two defensive coordinator in the league. So, you know, so sometimes, you know, um, some of the guys like a little, obviously like it a little challenge. Like if you're the, if you're, you know, hey, hey, what, you know, whoever you give me, I'm going to do my best, right? You know, you no, know, but I mean, sometimes it's nice to throw the guys a little bit of a bone, throw me a bone, right? There you go, he's Deontay Banks, right? Maybe to keep him happy, maybe to make the job maybe a little bit easier, right? Because if, if year in and year out, you just throwing, oh, hey, hey, Jerome, we got this guy, uh, we picked him up in the sandlot. 
He hasn't played football before, so he's going to be your number one cornerback. Good luck, God. You know, I mean, you start doing stuff like that, you know, it may not take too much for him to go, all right, I'm out of here. Have a good one. I'm going back to college. I'm going to be the, uh, you know, I'm the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech now. You know, I'll see you later, you know. So some people think it might um, be maybe to try to maybe keep Mr. Henderson happy, too, by bringing in some talent. Okay, so that's quite possible, too. Uh, but I mean, you got to give got to give props where props is due. I mean, I you know, um, for what we had back there, especially last season, you know, as I said, were we a top ten defense now? Well, we, you know, I mean, but for what we had, we didn't have a Bradbury and a Slay, okay, and then that stuff, right? But for what we did have, pretty respectable, okay. And as I said, that you know, a, a, a lot of you know the run defense problem wasn't always necessarily. Mr. Henderson's problem. He's the defensive backs. Now, obviously, they're supposed to obviously help in the, you know, with the run, run support and all that. But a lot of it starts up front. <laughs> and the guys just behind that defensive line, which always seem to get swept away with the blockers. So, I mean, you got, yeah, yeah. If you, if you got somebody there, you know, especially with, as, as talented as he is, as smart of a coach as, as he I think it was seven, I think it's 17 season. I just, I think I just looked it up. He's seven, 17 season. Not with the Giants, though. But, you know, sometimes you want to make them happy. Keep them happy. Keep them happy. They might want to stay around a little bit longer. So, and the Giants can use all the help they can get. So, but, um, you know, hey, if uh, uh, Amani Oruwarie has a good season, sign me up for that. But, once again, you don't know. Last year, I mean, I even heard, what was it? It was in the off season. Somebody, I can't remember if it was a Patricia Trainer or somebody was talking to somebody from Detroit because we just signed Oruwarie. You know, we just we got him and and they were talking to the, somebody from Detroit. And um, you know, what you know, what do you think we're getting with him? You know, Monty and, and the guy's like, you know, that's got that's a good one. I mean, last um, two years ago, he had six, the six interceptions and all that stuff and everything. Not that he was a lockdown corner, but you know, he got six interceptions. Yeah, he had a, that's a pretty good season, you know, not too bad overall. But then he said last year it's like his middle name was Toast. So you're not exactly sure. But sometimes a fresh start, positive atmosphere and all of that, and whatever, you know, maybe things might get better. And, and things get better. He's a giant. Sign me up for that. Let's go, baby. Right? Bring it on. So, got my fingers crossed for him. I mean, obviously, if he's a giant, I wish him nothing but the best. Then we have is it? Well, let's see. Who's who's the who's the next one? Is it Herm? Oh yeah, my man Herm. Now he's not feeling the Giants. He is not feeling the Giants. They were um, was it NFL? NFL Live, yeah. And I don't know who the guy is next to him, but he had that dude cracking up. And the guy's like, yeah, so the Giants are this and that, blah, blah, blah. Yes, Arm, you feeling the Giants this year? And he's like, nope. <laughs> now, he's got some, you know, he's got some, he had some good points there. He certainly had some good points. You know, he's, you know, the Giants are trying to, you know, catch up to, um, I think he said the Eagles were 28 points a game last year, I believe it was. He said the Cowboys were 27. The Giants were what? Tw- what the heck were the Giants last year? Were the Giants... Is it 21? What did they have last year? 21, 21.5. So, I mean, you know, the Eagles are like over 28. So the Eagles are over a touchdown. That's a lot. But can the Giants go up field goal? Can the Giants go from 21.5 to 24 with what they got? Did they sign Saquon? Added Michael Schmitz to center. Evan Niels takes a step forward, right? We got Andrew Thomas, one of the best tackles, left tackles in football. We got Waller. We got Hyatt and Hodgins and all those other guys. I mean, if we can stay relatively healthy, Daniel Jones and all that stuff, can we can we go up two and a half points up to 24 points a game? Yeah, I think so. But, you know, did we, you know, I, I think what maybe the question was, did they do enough? I think maybe to, I think what it was maybe to, to catch the Eagles or the Cowboys. And obviously, I don't, I don't, I, I think we all know the answer to that is no. But, you know, I think I think they're going in the right direction. I don't know if the Eagles are going to go from 28-something points or something the game to 30 or 31 or something. I don't know if the, the Cowboys are going to go from 27 to 28 or 29 or 30. I don't I don't know if that's going to happen. You know, uh, let's not forget the Eagles were a very healthy team last year. Now, if you look for the most part behind them, 
Now, if you look at their running backs, once again, it's kind of running back by committee. You know what I mean? So it's not like they're losing, uh, you know, a Saquon or something like that. You know, but um, or Derek Henry, you know. But I mean, if 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 you look, you know, I'm not thrilled behind uh, behind Goddard. I'm not really thrilled there if he gets injured. I'm not really thrilled. I mean, you 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 start looking some of these guys. All right, some. I mean, you know, they, they, like he went to, uh, you know, they went to Girly World and bought got a lot of nice high price toys. They got some Lamborghinis, some Maseratis there, a couple of Corvettes and something like that. Maybe maybe a Bentley here or something like that. All right, so that's the front line. But if the Bentley's got to go in for a flat tire, the Maserati blows a blows a gasket. The Corvette needs an oil change, right? The, the Ferrari drops its exhaust and needs to go in that. You know, you're going to start bringing in some uh, some Pintos and some Volvo, you know, some maybe some Volkswagen and stuff like that to back them up. It, some of it they don't have a, a, a ton of depth, partially because they, you know, some of it they're they're top heavy. You know, they, get, they spent a lot of money on some uh, high price guys. And after that, you know, they're a little on the weak side. So they have to stay healthy for them to get that. But, uh, you know, Herman also was kind of, I don't know, just like he was being a little, uh, I don't know. You kind of make fun of, obviously, Daniel Jones. I guess it's I guess it's not too hard to make fun of Daniel Jones. Good old Danny Dimes, he said. You know, he, he said, oh, Daniel Jones had 15 touchdown passes. Uh uh, I don't know. I guess that's why uh, that's why they call him Danny Dimes, I guess. Uh, you know, so uh, oh, let's see what we get from the big bad giants this year. Uh, you know, so he, he wasn't too high. He was kind of making then, – then, of course, at the end, I guess maybe he said maybe tried to try to make the politically correct speech and say, I hope I hope Daniel Jones does go, do good this year. I really do. Yeah, so I, I don't know if he really means that or not. He's just trying to, you know, say the, the nice thing. But, uh, you know, he's trying to make fun of the Giants, you know, as far as, um, you know, Daniel Jones only having 15 touchdown passes and stuff like that. Well, Harm's got to remember also, I, was, I, I, I didn't look. You can look it on, on YouTube and easily find, easily. Just type in Herm Edwards and go, hello, right? You play to win the game. Hello, right? Just type that in YouTube and his speech will come up. I, it was with the Jets, early 2000s, I guess it was, whatever. I, I don't remember what happened. I don't – well, he was pissed off, so I guess they probably lost again. Now, whatever they wound up doing, he probably did something. I don't know what it was. I forgot what it was. I knew at the time what it was, but it was, whatever, 20 years ago. But, um, you know, he did something, and a reporter asked him, you know, how come – whatever it was, how come you punted on third down, or how come you chose to go for it on fourth – and a foot from your own 40 or whatever it was. I, I don't remember. And, um, and, and, and you know, you got, he's got a little, you know, ticked off. He's, he's like, you know, hello, you play to win the game. Hello, you know, he's, he was a little ticked off. But, I mean, what he's all, you know, he's kind of forgetting a little bit is that how the, you know, the Giants, you know, with Daniel Jones with the 15 touchdown passes and stuff like that, and, you know, the big bad Giants, you know, I mean, they, they 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 played the game to win the game. That was the only way they were able to win the game last year. Yeah, for, for Daniel Jones to try to come in and get 35 touchdown passes, he was probably going to have to throw 74 interceptions to get that many touchdown passes. If he's going to start slinging it all over, because we don't have the weapons for it. We don't have the offensive line for it, right? So in order for the Giants to be able to win the game, it, it, uh, you know, Daniel Jones throws no touchdown passes. But guess what? We go to the Super Bowl. Okay. All right. Um, hold on. Six. Seven. Eight. Super Bowl eight. Bob Greasy threw seven, touch, seven passes in the Super Bowl. He threw seven passes, the whole Super Bowl. Completed six of them. Um, I think it was the championship game. I think he threw six passes. Against, I think it was that. I think, I think, I think, this, I think it was the seventy-three championship game against the Raiders. He threw six six passes. I think he completed five of them. They 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 run the ball. They played to win the game. It doesn't, you know. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying they won the game. Bob Greasy didn't have any touchdown passes. So at the end of the game, how many how many touchdown passes Bob Greasy have? None. Why? Because they knew they could run the ball. 
Why? Because you want you play to win the game. It doesn't matter how many, you know, if Daniel Jones has 700 touchdown passes, if, if you lose every game, what good is it? You play to win the game. You play so you don't lose the game, right? If Daniel Jones is slinging his ball all over the field, he's going to get a bunch of interceptions. What's that going to happen? We're going to lose the game. You have to play so you can win the game, right? You run Saquon, hopefully he stays healthy, right? You, you try to scheme some guys open to get the ball, to move the ball down the field. We got uh, Graham Money Gano kicking a lot of field goals for us, unfortunately. We were very good in the red zone if we ever got in there. But, you know, you play to win the game. I mean, uh, you know, Bob Greasy, you know, he's – at the end of a championship game, he maybe didn't throw any touchdown passes. Does that mean he, he sucks because he didn't throw any touchdown passes? But they won the game. Well, Bob, you, you, you suck. You didn't throw any touchdown. You only threw. You suck, Bob. Bob Crazy, you stink. You're the worst. You have nine touchdown passes. Why? Well, because we didn't have to. Because we played to win the game. Because if we can run the ball, win the game, that's all you know. So. You know, he's kind of forgetting this. The Giants don't have that kind of, you know, the first year of the regime. It's not like Shane and Dave have been there for 300 years and they keep screwing the roster up every year. You know, this is what they came in with. This is what they had. For them to win the football games, they couldn't, you know, all right, we're going to throw the ball 87 times a game. All right, even if we have our 19th, even if we have Chris Myrick in there, we're going to put Chris Myrick out wide, just tell him to run go patterns the whole game, and we're just going to keep throwing it deep to him. We're not going to complete anything, but we're just going to keep throwing it deep, you know. No, they had they played they had to play the way that designed the game so they didn't lose the game. You know, so apparently Herms seemed to be forgetting that. But uh, be nice to go back at the end of the season and have uh, Herm like maybe eat some of his words. Now I don't certainly think the Giants are going to you know be, be be number one. You know, the Giants scored thirty eight points a game this year. So I don't think that. But can we go from twenty one half up to twenty four? Yeah, I think so. I think so. But he's also forgetting, you know, I mean, the Giants, you know, don't have the number one receiver. I mean, if we had an ABCD lamb out there, well, we might be doing a little something special, special, right? If we had a Devontae Smith, maybe a little A.J. Brown out there, hmm, we might, uh, you know, might start throwing the ball a little bit deeper. But let's see what Dave and, and Kafkin can can fire up here. Oh, we've got a love show. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, buddy. Happy Fourth of July weekend. Happy, 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 happy. Yeah. Same to you, pal. Same to you. Stay safe. No, uh, no JPP in it, right? Hmm. <laughs> Keep your hands away from those firecrackers or whatever it was. The M80, I think it was an M80 yet. Oh, my God. My Giants will continue to grow. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, but I'm saying once again, it, it's a process. It's, you know, what I mean, I don't think, hopefully nobody's out there is like, well, this is the second season. I mean, we, we should be in the Super Bowl. I don't see why. You know I mean? It's a process. You know, one thing you do kind of like too, you know, hopefully is that Shane's not like, you know, mortgage in the future. We, we got to get the Andre Hopkins in here. Let's get that OBJ in here. We'll just, uh, I don't know, we'll just start like pushing, kicking money down the road so we can get those guys in here. We'll trade away all our first round picks for the next 13 years to get to get a team for this season so we can win. You know, he's not doing that. You know, he's holding on to his assets. He's a little piece of the puzzle here, a little piece of the puzzle there. And hopefully, as you know, as the years go by, we get better and better. Now, are we better right now than when we took than when they took over the beginning of last season? Oh, yeah, I definitely think so. Are we heading in the right direction? Yeah. We bring in some right guys, you know, some good quality ball players, intelligent and all, you know, maybe with the you know, right mindset and everything like that. May not try to disturb the locker room. And all. Oh yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, definitely. I mean, you start looking at, I mean, you know, what, what was our, uh, a couple of our problems, right? We had, you know, two problems, maybe we had multiple problems, but you know, as I said, it's a process, but they asked you on defense, what was our big, big problem, right? Stopping the run. What did they do? Brought in Nunez, Roaches, and they shot around. Nunez, Roaches, what the, Man, that freaking dude's unbelievable. He cracks me up every time I see him. Every he's just always smiling. He said, I do this stuff in my sleep. Not rush the passer, stop the run. I do that in my sleep. A. Sean Robinson, dude's a massive human being. Let's hope I think it's his meniscus. Let's hope that heals up and everything like that. And he's okay. I mean, he could be a huge, you know, addition to the Giants. But uh, you know, it's only only got him for one year. So hopefully, if he if he's healthy and all that and everything, man. That's going to be huge. And if we can sign him for, you know, maybe after this season, if he can stay healthy. Uh, I said, okay, okay. Right. I mean, he's maybe not the best, but I mean, he's 
better than what we had. So we we cer- certainly uh, w- w- should be better at stopping the run without question this year. And we should be able to rotate sexy Dexy and Leonard Williams in there, right? So we should be better at stopping the run. And one of the things we, which Herm Edwards brought up, the Giants were last in, in the most in in, in, uh, in uh, explosive plays with 20 more yards, I believe it was last year. Yep. <laughs> That's because we, you know, I mean, it's, it's a combination of things. Maybe uh, they didn't want Daniel Jones standing in the pocket, maybe with a little bit of a porous offensive line, right? We don't maybe have uh, the weapons. They didn't think to, to try to do stuff like that. I mean, every now and then we took some shots down the field, but not as not much as we should. Um, you know, so what do we do? We had a lot of speed, right? I mean, we had Paris Campbell, fast, got Hyatt, fast. Let's hope Bryce for Wheaton quite possibly maybe can, you know, if we, if he doesn't make the team, maybe get him on the practice squad. We, you know, we signed him uh, to a, a, it's like a quarter of a million dollars. I think it was, um, you know, but so we added speed. Now we added speed, but then we added a mismatch. We got, we got Waller guys like a, 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 a NBA forward running. It's like a, he's like LeBron James running down the field. I mean, my God, you know, so, so we, Add a lot. I mean, as I said, you know, do we add, you know, Hopkins or uh, OBJ or somebody like, you know, no. But, you know, did we get better? Yeah, I think so. You know, would you, would you rather have Cager and Myrick from last year and, uh, you know, um, Vinette and Bellinger? Or would you rather have Waller and Bellinger and maybe Cager? I think I'd rather have Waller, Bellinger, and Cager, you know. So, you know, as I said, once again, it's a process. There's, there ain't no magic wand. Boom! We got the greatest team in football. Let's, you know, <laughs> you know it's going to be a process. But as I said, next year, hopefully, we get a little bit better, right? And hopefully, you know, next year, you know, with, the, with maybe some free agency and, and another decent draft, you know, you take what, rounds one, two, three, maybe we get another nice three guys in there, start plugging those guys in there, you know, and we say, maybe start talking, right? And then the final, oh, man, this one, man, I tell you what, Man, it, it's just like a gut punch here. I mean, the, the USA, the, the Giants, they're um, – they're, well, it wasn't the worst. but it, They were in the bottom tier, which is really bad. It says USA today says the Giants – ranks Giants fans among the – among, not the worst, but among the worst. I think there's 10, is it 10 tiers. Is that what it was? Tier oh, – tier 8. Tier nine, tier 10. Was tier 10? Is that it? Okay, yeah, tier 10. Stop the chop. Look, they got the Texans, the Giants, and then they got the Chiefs. Why? The Chiefs are the, well, I mean, I guess they're just being jack wagons here a little bit. I, I mean, the, it because it says the Tomahawk chop lands you in last place. I don't know why, why that would land you in last place. I mean, I mean, you know. I mean, if you're if you're a football fan, you know, and you you, you got you know the you know oh you know I could see if, if you were a jack wagon and you just couldn't appreciate something like that. But you know, I mean, that, that's 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 what they do. The, you know, Kansas, you know, you know, oh, you know, you know, whole place going. It is right, but they got the Eagles. I mean, are you serious? I mean, <laughs> are you serious? Where are the Eagles? Where ain't it? Ain't it top? The top? There's a long article here. The Browns are number one. The Steelers are number two. They say the Steelers are knowledgeable. The Packers. Okay. Okay. Packers are number three. Okay. Maybe tier two. That's where the Eagles are at. Yeah. They got the Seahawks. I can't complain about that. It's tier two, which is, I guess is basically team four. Then it says the Lions. I mean, I mean, and the Ravens. I, I don't know where they're getting some of this stuff at, but they have the Eagles are number one. Five, the best fans. It says the only reason Eagle fans aren't tier one is because fans used to get so sauced there. There was a jail inside the old stadium. Can't reward that type of shenanigans, or should we? I mean, they're a bunch of bunch of morons or a bunch of losers. It's like if if you don't agree with this, it will beat you up. That's basically the way it is. I mean, they throw there's pictures that. Of, I don't know when it was, but there was, I think it was the 49ers were playing the Eagles and there was like two 49er fans were sitting there and it was sometime, it was, it was a few years ago and, and, and apparently it had been snowing out and you see somebody with their phone just taking videos of it. And it must be like 
20 snowballs at a time just just being fired at these two fans. They're just sitting there. They, they, I think they have 49er jerseys on. They're just covering their heads. And all, all these low-life, absolute worthless pieces of garbage, human trashes, pieces of human I, – I was just start cursing, but um, YouTube wouldn't want that. So, you know, I could go on for about nine years with curse words of what the Eagle fans really are. But as I said, once again, YouTube wouldn't appreciate that. So um, so just imagine all the four-letter words that you can possibly think of, and that's what the Eagle fans are. It's just, just trash, absolute human trash. And they're just, you know, throwing, throwing these snowballs at people. Um, it just, I, it's, I, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where to get this stuff from. It's just absolutely unbelievable. They say the Giants are oh, – let me see here. I got to go way down to the bottom here. Tier 10, the Giants. Only Cowboy fans are bigger front runners. So the Giants – so apparently we're front runners. I I, see, I don't understand too, but, but they said the, – the Cowboys are – Bigger front runners, but they have the Cowboys rated as better fans than the Giants are. I don't, I don't understand that. The Giants are the Giants are number thirty one, and the Chiefs are number thirty two. The Chiefs are, are you ever go out to the Midwest? I tell you what, I mean, you know, the the, the fans out there are are very. I mean, St. Louis is a very knowledgeable, classy, all of that and everything like that. You know, in that area, you know, and the Chiefs. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Where does they get it from? I mean, I know the Browns fans are good fans, Steelers are good fans, and all that stuff and everything. But I, I have no idea where they're getting the Giants. That we're front runners. I don't know, but I mean, it also says in the article too that um, some people are going to be pissed off about this. Let's let's see what. Uh, hold on here. It's from USA Today. Uh, let's see. And, and Eagle fans I knew once knew she said she was at a game and a huge brawl broke out in the section directly behind her. She looked back at the commotion, noted it, took a sip of her drink, and then quickly turned her attention back to the game. Sounds about right. So that's that's a good fan. I mean, it, it just it's just low life versus a piece of human trash there. It's unbelievable. Nothing breaks the gaze of an Eagles fan on their guys. A nuke could go off, and Eagle fans would wade through the hellfire like the Martians in War World of War of Worlds. When walking through the parking lot once after a game, an Eagle fan said, "I look like a Walmart Denzel Washington." Bonus points for that. Why? Because they're morons, they're low life scum. Really? Um, yeah, they're, they're they're trash, absolute trash. Eagles fans have character. Now they're 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 trash. This is why they rank high on the inaugural USA Sports tiered fan rankings. Yeah. Then it says here, it says here, pre be prepared to be outraged. So, yeah. So, basically, uh, whoever the, the low life worthless piece of human trash, Mike Freeman, the, the idiot who wrote these, um, these, these rankings, has no idea what he's talking about. He's a worthless piece of human trash, though. He, he can go with the Eagles. Uh, actually, what he should do, was put himself in the put himself in an Eagles game, okay, and um, and dress up as the opponent team and start cheering for the opposing team, opposing team, and see how long it takes for him to get his rear end handed to him. You know, at the vet, it used to be a thing when I first moved here, and it, this was the same thing for Phillies games because the, the vet was a bowl, and um, <laughs> it, you know, it was uh, artificial turf and all that stuff. It was built nineteen seventy one. Uh, what was it, 2004 or 2003? 2003, maybe. 2003, I think. Maybe that, that the championship game was that might have been the last game at the vet. That's when uh, Rondé Barber picked off a Donovan McNabb pass, ran it back for a touchdown, and put the yeah, put the game kind of kind of on ice for the Bucks and sent them to the uh, the, the Super Bowl where they wound up beating the uh, the Raiders. So I think it was I was that was two or three, 2002 or 2003. But anyway. Um, the top section at the vet used to be called the 700 level. And the 700 level is only known for one thing. Well, two things, beer and fights. That's, that's all. If, if you were, if you were somebody on another team, an opposing team, you know, you, you know, um, you need to keep your mouth shut because if you go up there, really, I mean, and you start, you know, mouthing off, you're just asking for a fight. 
And you might be whatever, maybe a real good fighter or something like that. But if you get five or six worth this piece of human trash, Eagle fans jumping on you, you know, it's kind of tough to beat those kind of odds because they're, they're just a bunch of, they're just trash. But I mean, that's, that's, it, that was even in baseball games, baseball games. I mean, you go up, up, uh, you know, up in the 700 level and you just start mouthing off and stuff like that. You're just asking for it because basically they're all, the Eagle fans are right there right now at the stadium. They're in the parking lot right now. Drinking, waiting for opening day. That's that's what that, that's what's in the parking lot right now. They're they're about nine months early drinking, getting ready for opening day. So that, so they'll be prepared. They'll be nice and drunk when the game starts. I mean that's that's all they do. They just they're just garbage, absolute garbage. Uh, yeah, I can't. And I'm, unfortunately, I'm about twenty minutes from Philadelphia, so that's why I I, I just despise the Eagle fans. I just can't stand them. But I mean to put them like number five or six or something like that. That's to me they're they're. It's hard for me to put them at the worst because I I can't I can't say I've driven to go to all the stadiums and this and that and everything like that. But to me, they're I mean, you know, uh, they call the Giants front runners. Well, I mean, you you, uh, you ever go to an Eagle game? If they start losing, boy, they turn on them fast too. I mean, the, the Eagle fans are there. The Eagle fans are awesome. And this that once you when you're winning, once you start losing, boy, they'll turn on you real fast. I mean, it was one time back in the late 60s, even Santa Claus, 68 or 69, it might have been or whatever, at halftime. I think it was halftime. I think he was walking in the field. It, was, it must have been, it might have been the last game of the season because back then in the 60s, they didn't play until Christmas. The Christmas games were like the playoff games. So the, the, the last games of the season were like maybe December 17th or 18th or something like that. The, the final games of the season were never around Christmas. So, it had to be before Christmas it was because the Eagles back then didn't – in the late 60s, there were no playoff games back then. So so it must have been like at halftime before Christmas, and Santa Claus was out there walking, I guess, waving to the fans and stuff like that, and they were pelting them with snowballs. You know I mean? <laughs> Only drunk Eagle fans would do something like that. If, you, if you're pelting Santa Claus with snowballs, you got you got problems. So I don't, I don't know how the – you know, once again, it's just an article, just something to talk about. But I, I don't know how they have the Giants as front runners and have the Eagles, I think, the, like the fifth best fans out there. <laughs> what morons. What absolute losers. But um, I hope, all I hope, boys, at the end of the season, and when, we, when we look back at what the, the Giants did offensively, hopefully we can kind of go back at Herm Edwards and laugh at him for his comments saying the Giants uh, offense is – Still pretty sad, but well, guys, it's been 57 minutes, almost a full hour. Let me just shoot my mouth off. Vinny G Man and Chris, Christopher Tony. Uh oh, you're not you're not <laughs> you're not related to Canarius, are you? <laughs> just kidding. But uh anybody who spent any time watching me, thank you, thank you, thank you. If anybody spends any time watching the replay this, once again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can use all the support I can get, guys. And as always, you guys stay safe out there and go Giants! Woo!